Joining us now is Representative Rodney Davis, a Republican serving the 13th District of Illinois. Congressman, a lot of your colleagues right now are calling for accountability both on China and the World Health Organization. I want to start with the latter. Some are saying that the United States should cut funding to the World Health Organization. Some even asking for a congressional inquiry. Where do you stand on those calls? Well, I certainly think we need to look into what the, the World Health Organization has done. But I agree with Secretary Pompeo. The time is not now for that. The time is after we defeat this virus and we can Monday morning quarterback when it's all over. And so when it comes to the immediate, what should the U.S. be doing? We know that those uh, $1,200 checks are going to begin going out this week. We know that the White House has been talking to other governors who are talking about reopening the economy, specifically on the West Coast. We've heard that that may be the first one to happen. W what should the focus and the priorities of the administration be at this point? Well, the focus has been and should be it's the small mom and pop shops. Look, I'm sitting in my nephew's bar right now that is closed because it's deemed non-essential by the governor of Illinois. It's an empty, empty facility that's normally packed during the springtime. Uh, these are the small businesses that have been getting the assistance from us in Congress and from President Trump and his administration. The dollars are going out the door to help these communities and help these mom and pop shops be able to have the funding to keep their employees employed and to be there when we defeat this virus and our economies reopen. And that was a big part of that stimulus package too, is to try to hope that people are left on those payrolls for starters, that people don't have to go on unemployment, but also that there's some cash on hand and personnel for those businesses, such as the one you're at right now, to once again hit the ground running once the economy does open again. So there's no lull in that in-between period. Is that the focus of what Congress should be doing as well? Is that the guide of what they should be going is looking not only to the immediate, as we're talking about opening up those places as well, but also the long term? Because I don't think the uh, not only lawmakers, but the American people want to deal with a new stimulus bill every couple of weeks until things get back to normal. So is it really the emphasis on opening the economy right now for those businesses? Absolutely it is. And, and it's this bridge funding that we were able to approve through our Paycheck Protection Program, something that's been implemented in less than two weeks. These are the opportunities here that I think we as Congress have to look at if we're going to do anything. We've got to make sure we put more money into this program like Leader McConnell and Leader McCarthy have asked for. The Democrats keep playing games. They want to add money to pots that still haven't been spent yet. But it's small businesses like this that have to reopen. And when they do, we can get back to that historic economic growth, that historic low unemployment that the Trump administration working with us has given this country. Remember, just a few short weeks ago, we had an economy and an unemployment number that all of us who've ever run for Congress promised the American people we would get to. We can get back there. We just have to continue to focus on the issues at hand, like opening businesses like this back up. And a lot of people are hoping, too, that because this was coming at the hands of the government, that once they turn it back on, it should take off a little bit quicker than, for example, the 2008 recession, where it was a cyclical type of business practice type of stuff that resulted in the economy taking a downturn, whereas this was the government asking people to stay home, which is a little bit different. So hopefully that should provide some optimism. But looking at this whole situation in general, uh, some other uh, problems have arisen, or at least concerns, one being the pharmaceutical line uh, to China, the U.S. dependent on China for medical manufacturing. Are there other things that we should be taking out of this where it's a lesson learned that we can improve on moving forward? Yeah, when this is over, we got to get the experts together, you know, experts in supply chain management, experts in the pharmaceutical industry and the manufacturing industry when it comes to personal protective equipment. We've learned a valuable lesson, and President Trump started holding China accountable, but we never knew what this pandemic would do. We dodged a bullet in this country with H1N1, with SARS, and with Ebola. Now we know that we have to have a supply chain here in the United States for vaccines, for drug development, and for personal protective equipment. And if we in Congress don't allow funding for these things to come back here, then it's on us. And you mentioned before, the U.S. had tensions with China even before the coronavirus outbreak. Of course, those were trade tensions. But even then, we would see more of an amicable relationship. President Trump would tweet every now and then, calling Xi Jinping his friend, saying that trade negotiations were going along as normal. The phase one deal was a big moment between the two relations. Coming out of this, is there a different relationship with China, or do you suspect the two nations, the two largest economies, to continue that type of growth? 
Well, I think we'll obviously have trade, and we need to have trade. Mm -hmm. uh, in phase one, I'd like to see implemented because really we haven't seen that progress that the Trump administration made with the renegotiated NAFTA and also phase one of a China deal, a, a, a direct deal. We haven't seen these trade agreements come into play. Well, what will change, though, is the issues that we're facing right now with personal protective equipment and also drug development, vaccine development, testing development when it comes to uh, test measures. These are the things that we will bring back from China. We will help our manufacturers be able to get the products manufactured here in the United States. And it really goes along with President Trump's America First agenda anyway. And then between the USMCA and also the phase one China deal, of course, they want to continue making progress on the Chinese trade, Chinese trade relations. But we already have the phase one signed, put in place, it just needs to be followed through on. Between that and the USMCA, should that help boost the economy coming out of this? Absolutely, it should. Look, we're going to have the demand once again when this economy go, opens up. Now, when it comes to agriculture, we're not, we're, we're not seeing a lot of beef going to restaurants. We're not seeing a lot of chicken and pork. We're not seeing milk and produce go to our schools and our school nutrition program. So those are going to, those will in turn return to the demand levels that we once had before. And when that happens, you're gonna see our ag sector, you'll see our manufacturing sector succeed. And because these trade agreements are in place and because the basic backbone of our economic growth and steady growth that we've had in this country before this crisis hit is there. I see, I see an economy that's going to grow immediately. And I think you'll see the markets reflect that too. Yeah, we already see the markets bouncing back a little bit. We saw it at the end of last week, especially after that bill was signed. Talks of uh, just the economy once again stabilizing. Now we're seeing talks of the economy opening again. We're seeing Wall Street reflect those gains. But it's really when wages start getting back, when people start getting back to business as well, that's really where the American worker is more so affected. So I'm looking forward to seeing that happening. But Congressman Davis, I really appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you. Thank you.